som Danmarks antiterrorkorps, rykker politiets aktionsstyrke ud, når politiet har brug for et ekstra gear. Right, y'all, I'm at the Arms Channel. Okay, so today we're checking out units out of Denmark. Now, I think we've checked out something from Denmark before. I think we had to have at this point uh, with how long we've been doing these reaction videos. But today we're checking out the Danish Police Special Intervention Units. So it looks like this was uploaded back in June. They were kind of celebrating their 50th anniversary. So that seems like it's about on par with a lot of the other special police that we've checked out. So it makes it seem like these guys were also built out of necessity out of the 1972 kind of Munich Olympics incident. Um, but I guess we'll have to see. It looks like it gives a little bit of background early on in the video and then kind of showcases some of their operations and some of the stuff that these guys can do. And kind of clicking through it, they look pretty freaking high speed. Again, we haven't checked out a whole lot from Denmark, if anything, before, but I'm pretty excited to see how their special police are equipped. Um, I don't really know a whole lot about Denmark's like kind of like GDP or how, you know, how much money they have for these specific units, but it looks like these guys are pretty well taken care of, which makes sense if these got if these guys kind of are, they're like premier special police, but should be cool. Let's go ahead and get into it. Manden her er en del af politiets aktionsstyrke, og det er en top hemmelig specialenhed under politiets efterretningstjeneste PET, som tager sig af de allerfarligste opgaver. Den blev etableret efter OL i München i 1972, hvor palæstinensiske yeah, okay. terrorister tog israelske sportsfolk som gisler. Og her der blev Danmark, ligesom andre vestlige lande, klar It's crazy how much influence that had. I mean, it makes sense, but holy cow. Aktionsstyrken opererer helst i det skjulte, men som man kan se her, så er de faktisk kendt fra rydning af ungdomshuset, hvor de blev fyret ned fra helikoptere, eller ved angreb oh, no på grundtønden, hvor de efterfølgende oh, nice. Some real world operations. eller som her, hvor de rykker ind efter skyderiet i en købcenter fields. Let's we'll see if we can find some footage of that. Og dens aktioner helt lukket land for offentligheden. Men i anledning af 50-årsjubilæet, der har vi fået lov til at få et sjældent indblik i aktionsstyrkens træning. Oh ja. Yeah. I'll take it. Seems like such an un unassuming kind of helicopter. Oh nice, what is that one? The frame rate on this video is also pretty nice. Det er de her mænd, der bliver tilkaldt til politiet. Oh, okay, hold on. We have to check out the gear, of course. So it looks like he's got like a, kind of like a dry suit on or something. It looks like he has, what is that, like a SIG rifle? Pretty nice. It looks, it looks like it's set up for simulations as well. Nice high cut helmet, strobes, flashlights. Yeah, these guys definitely got a pretty good, der pretty good budget. Der bliver tilkaldt til politiets farligste operationer. Som Danmarks antiterrorkorps rykker politiets aktionsstyrke ud, når politiet har brug for ekstra gear. <laughs> det er ligesom aktionsstyrkens kerneopgave også at være klar til det, som vi ikke lige regner med sker i morgen. Og mens de venter på den dag, hmm. hvor de virkelig gælder, så træner de. Oh, yeah. Det må ikke være dual tube, they got the packs, the suppressors. Der skal vi jo være klar. Interesting transition. I den lille nordvestjyllandske by Havnsø er freden denne dag. Northwest Zealand? Yeah, I, I mean, I know Denmark has like some weird looking names for stuff, but that's unique. Forbi. Alle mand, unique. første store hold er I samlet. På havnen er et myller af kampklædte mænd. Ooh, Arcteryx, okay. Det tilgang er en fennik, en mølin og en rib. Politiets okay, so aktionsstyrke fennec, fennec holder helicopter. øvelse. Men vi træner jo alle de scenarier, øh, som forhåbentlig aldrig bliver relevante. Øh, vi har jo behov for at øve de færdigheder, som, som aktionsstyrken ligesom, øh, skal kunne mestre. Der skal øves i samarbejde med oh, frømænds og jærkokset huh? og forsvarets helikoptere. Nice, okay. Politiets aktionsstyrke The og er always politiets pretty efterretningstjeneste badass to see. PT, og det er sjældent offentligheden får et kig ind. Og der er stadigvæk mange detaljer, som vi ikke må vise, og vi kan heller ikke fortælle præcis, hvor mange de er. Police der må sige, desværre så er der jo øh, en modpart eller kræfter på, på den anden side, som, som ikke vil os det godt. Og helt sikkerhedsmæssigt, øh, så er vi ikke interesseret i at, at give dem indblik i hverken vores øh, antal mm. eller vores metoder. Stine Harpsø står som aktionsstyrkens chef, frem med navn og ansigt, men de menige skal forblive anonyme. Jamen, uh, bekymring mm. operativt er selvfølgelig, at, at vi bliver... Kind of wonder how big the team actually is. I, I know they probably won't actually say it, but I also don't know if this 
if this unit is kind of centralized in one area or if they have like kind of like pockets of this units all over the country. I mean, Denmark in and of itself is not like huge footprint wise, but I mean, I guess it would make sense to have some kind of like, um, you know, different areas or different teams spread out. Det er at aktionsstyrken og politiet er til stede. Og rent privat er det jo min ro i maven med, at der ikke er nogen, der kan finde frem til min film. Okay, the blur is not like really that helpful on the eyes, to be honest. Og jeg bor. Temaet for dagens øvelse er at træne adgang til steder, hvor det er vanskeligt at komme til. For eksempel et skib i bevægelse. Øvelsesscenariet, vi bygger op, er jo, at der er en eller anden form for... It's always cool to see the maritime stuff, especially. Et hold skal øve sig i at komme ombord fra en båd. Aktionsstyrken hægter sig fast med en krog og skal en efter en kravle ombord. Just seeing the difference. Scenariet Holy er, cow. at skibet er under kontrol. <laughs> Jeez, okay. <laughs> that was pretty freaking terrifying. Uh, that was probably one of the most sketchy looking boards I've I've seen. I mean, yeah, generally speaking, they'll have like I don't know, whatever, like a hook with a Jacob slider or something. But dude, the 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 coxswain's not even like trying to keep that boat. <laughs> they're, yeah, their little boat next to the ship. And this dude just. Golly, that looked freaking brutal. I mean, those waves are pretty gnarly. Aktionsstyrkens opgave er at være klar, hvis de værst tænkelige hændelser, terror og kriminalitet indtræffer. Men udover det assisterer de også det almindelige politi med observationer og særligt farlige anholdelser. Vi er jo, kan man sige, populært sagt et antiterrorkorps, som bistår med særligt vanskelige opgaver. Det er et nyt one, jeg tror. Det er både komplekse og potentielt meget farlige opgaver, men også opgaver, hvor det måske bare stiller en anden krav, altså en anden forventning til diskretion eller oh, is that a fair concept sling? Udstyr og teknik. Det er langt fra, like at it. hver gang vi er på opgave, så, så springer vi ting i luften og, og skyder til højre og venstre. Svært imod, så er det ofte et diskret arbejde og politiforretninger. Yeah, especially when you're talking about like a, a special police unit, you do need to operate with a lot more kind of um, discretion. When it comes to like military, you know, you're generally going to be called up for a very specific thing. Um, and that's generally to kind of make contact with the enemy. But if these guys are dealing with terrorists, um, of, of course, like taking out the terrorists is going to be something that they're going to be pretty well equipped to do. But as far as like the actual police line of the work, um, being able to kind of understand what is important for the, you know, the rest of the police force to get their hands on when it comes to, you know, evidence or stuff for prosecution or, you know, kind of just maintaining that chain of custody is probably going to be pretty important for these guys too. So, a few more things to worry about. Different from the military. Oh, nice. We get to some fast roping. Hell yeah. Meget, meget hurtigt at at anvende helikopteren og så komme hurtigt ned. Det er også høj risiko træning. Altså der er jo en konsekvens, hvis man falder ned af torvet eller hvis man hvis man Dude, får scary boat to fast Action rope onto. Menneskab er scary alle ship. Uddannet, og har speciel træning oveni. Oh nice. Det er kun omkring 7% af ansøgerne og indtil videre kun mænd der har klaret sig gennem nåløjet. Grundlæggende skal der være en, en fysik som er i orden. Mm. I wonder if it's open uh, frem, så skal man uh, mentalt uh, være rolig. Der er nogle af tingene som går meget meget stærkt. Og der skal man dels være, være klar til at handle, Dude, they look high og, og lige så vigtigt, så skal man også være klar i nogle af de der situationer, hvor det går stærkt, ikke at handle hurtigt, men netop stoppe op og sige, jeg skal ikke gøre noget her. Politiets aktion styrker ikke den samme i dag, som den blev dannet for 50 år siden. I mange år bestod den af betjente på tilkald fra forskellige kredse. Okay. I dag er det en top professionel enhed. Så so det er en different district. Det er dele af aktionsstyrkens kerne-DNA, som, som ikke er blevet forandret. Men der er også nogle strukturer, som er anderledes. <laughs> That was like the, the calmest fast roping I've ever seen. I mean, with our fast roping, especially like coming out of the Osprey, the fast rope is always, even if it was like a 90 or 120 foot fast rope, that thing was coming out at like a 45 degree angle. But this, like, this dude just riding this down. It also goes to show that he's probably pretty freaking strong to kind of slow himself down this much. Something that I see, especially with like a lot of Marines or something that I saw was whenever they're fast roping, they would go a little bit too fast because they have all this equipment and sometimes it's kind of hard to, to brace yourself. And uh, yeah, you're always kind of sketched out that someone's going to break their ankle. But this dude seems very much in control, not even using his knees. 
Jeg tror blandt andet, at man for 50 år siden ville være, ville være noget forundret over alt den teknik, vi bruger i dag. I dag står vi med nogle andre træningsmuligheder, end de gjorde for 50 år siden. Omvendt, mm. så, så kan der også være... Det kan komme, der er det. Fast rips er moving. Nå, no, der vender hen mod spidsen af skibet. <laughs> yes. Er underhånd? Ja. Okay. Og den anden er overhånd. Ja. Hvordan er det at have sådan et job, hvor man ligesom går ligesom i den der venteposition? Ja, yeah, det er helt klart et paradoks. Det er jo, at hmm. øh, hvis jeg var fodboldspiller eller håndboldspiller, så, så, så ville jeg jo vide, at der var kampe på, på to. Oh, interesting eller, analogy. Og her ved jeg jo ikke, om kampen kommer. Og øh, jeg håber jo sådan set slet ikke, at kampen kommer. Jeg håber yeah, også, at jeg right. skal spille, fordi at jeg har jo mine, øh, mine, mine børn og min kone og, og resten af samfundet. Men det er også klart, at sådan, øh, professionelt er der jo også en, hmm. en lyst til at øh, og løse de øh, problemer, vi er sat i verden for. Hvis der er... And that goes to show like how professional these guys are. They kind of understand that if they are called up for, things have gone pretty bad. So it's really interesting. I mean, I was kind of in a unit like this when I was on the recapture tactics team, kind of like a reactionary unit where you train very um, methodically, very, um, very often and, and, and pretty tough. And you have kind of like a high standard of training when you're actually talking about, you know, going through these facilities and how you employ tactics and how you employ equipment and how you use discretion with the people who are in there. But there's a lot of things to consider when you're talking about being on a reactionary force because you have all these people that are very well trained, very disciplined, and it takes a lot to kind of make sure you're not getting complacent in that kind of role. Because of course, if you are being called up for, that means things have gotten really bad and that means you're going to need to use these skills. And for us, like it, it didn't really happen so much, uh, of course, like nobody was really going to these nuclear facilities as, mu as much, but these guys can get called on for a few different things and in a few different environments. So they have kind of more that they need to pull out if they do need to use it, kind of more in their, in their tool belt that they need to pull out, whether it be maritime operations, CQB, um, just general kind of like police or anti-terrorism intervention. So it's a little bit harder for them. And of course, um, definitely more at stake more often. I nogle perioder kan være langt mellem opgaverne, så kan det være noget af det, der, hvor vi prøver at spænde ben for os selv ved at, at stræbe efter og blive bedre og bedre og bedre. Yeah, it's constantly training. Dagens sidste øvelse går ud på at komme ud på Sejrhø, hvor scenariet er, at en fiktiv gerningsmand er løs. Situationen den er, at der er kommet et 112 opkald for et vidne ude på Sejrø, der har set en mandsperson hmm. bevæbnet med en militær That's a nice freaking helicopter, really cow. Øvelsen her går jo ud på, at, at man får kan man sige, nogle alarmopkald fra sådan en ø. Uh, hvordan kommer vi hurtigt derover? Hvordan får nice, man uh, overblik over situationen? for identificeret gerningsmanden eller gerningsmændene, øh, samtidig med, at man måske også skal yde noget hjælp og noget, noget assistance til nogle borgere. Det yeah, ligger yeah. også i jobbeskrivelsen, at det er et potentielt fejl. Oh, it's a fucking bike. Jeg, Jeez. Why is it so hard for me to see? Risikoen, der kan være. Wait, what the heck? Er det? Jobbeskrivelsen. Okay, yes. <laughs> I'm so fixated on the light, I could not see what that was. That's pretty cool. I wonder what they use that for. I mean, I guess just kind of chasing down suspects. Huh. Men i gidsstationer, der er det jo omvendt. Der er det jo gidslet, der, der kommer først. Og det er jo ligesom vores del, oh, yeah, at, at vi skal være klar til at, at løbe den risiko for, at det gidslet overlever. Det er et godt point as well. Jeg, jeg løbende kigger i spejlet og ikke mindst kigger på mine, mine to børn og min, min kone og se om det stadigvæk er det værd. Men det er det stadig. Ja, mm. yeah, Hostess Rescue has a very interesting, unique kind of mindset. For at skal, skal slå nogen ihjel, så skal der jo være enten mit eget, min, min kollegas eller øh, borgernes liv, der, der er i fare. Så det er, var jeg allerede som politimand afklaret med, at det, er, det kan blive konsekvensen af det. Mm. Det var politiets aktionsstyrke, der skød terroristen Omar El Hussein efter terrorangrebet ved Kotønnen. Men risikoen for skudepisoder er ikke up. generelt større for aktionsstyrken, mener han. At jeg får så meget træning i det daglige, at jeg måske kan vurdere nogle af situationerne med lidt mere overskud. Fordi jeg har trænet det så meget og trænet det for at få en overkapacitet. Så jeg helt slipper for at skyde. Jeg synes, jeg, det må være mere farligt at køre... That is true, though. Although their job is, you know, inherently more dangerous and they're called upon for a pretty dangerous task. Yeah, he's right in saying that 
having that training needs to be pretty much on par with what you're actually being asked to do. But these guys, again, kind of being the top, top notch police, getting that funding, having the, the right equipment, having the right people for the job, they're going to get more opportunities to do that training. So they're going to be more kind of um, accustomed to different situations. They can kind of try different scenarios in their training and they're just gonna have more repetition. So they are going to be the best people for any kind of specific incident involving kind of like a deadly threat. I nye dag ud af mange er ved at være slut. Teknikker og strategier er blevet pusset af endnu en gang. Så aktionsstyrken er lidt mere klar til den dag, hvor det virkelig gælder. Der er altid noget, hvor man identificerer oh, noget, damn, man skal have gjort, noget, man skal gå hjem og, og prøve at arbejde videre med. Så, så der er altid noget at lære, og det er jeg også sikker på, at der er noget i dag. At vi vil gerne skrue på de procenter, vi, vi kan. Det må ikke være tilfældigt, om, om, om vi rammer niveauet på dagen. Mm, I like that. I can't be left a chance. Når vi optaget i aktionsstyrken, der skal man være huh. politiuddannet, og man skal blandt andet bestå en fysisk test, støvleløb, klatring og sømning. Yeah, I'd love to see what their like physical fitness exam looks like. It would be cool if we can get like a video on that at some points. Maybe Magnus Midbo would do something like that. <laughs> Start branching out of Norway and stuff. Again, while it's cool to kind of see the tactics that they're working with, the equipment they have, even like kind of like the environment that they're working with and their background for why the unit was actually formed, it is kind of awesome to get those interviews from those people and kind of hear their mindset. Again, you had one who's kind of talking about his his family, what it means to be in a sort of police unit, where if you do need to actually use those skills, you have those people who are at risk. You have families at risk, you have wives, you have children, stuff like that. So it's kind of cool to get into that mindset. And again, like the other dude was saying, like you can't leave things up to chance, which is why they're always kind of motivated to do their training and always kind of branch out and do different things to make sure that they're ready for different types of scenarios. So it must be awesome to kind of get that creative liberty to come up with different scenarios and try different things, especially kind of like based on, you know, historical events or things that have happened, not just in Denmark, but in other countries to kind of use that as an example and kind of game it out and prepare and actually run those scenarios to see how you guys would actually do it. But this video pretty much gave us everything we need to kind of understand the units, uh, kind of like at a face value, understanding the background, what they're used for, what kind of like missions they're responsible for and kind of how they work with the normal police, which is not something that we always hear about so much, um, especially with like a lot of different countries, they have kind of like different police units as well. So, you know, sometimes the lines get a little bit blurred. But if you guys have any other information about this unit, or if you have any other videos that you know about, kind of talking about some of the real world events that these guys actually responded to, definitely send it my way so I can check it out. I am gonna do some research on some of the ones, especially like um, that one terrorist they were talking about. Uh, I'm gonna do some research, kind of check that out and see how these guys kind of played a role in that. Because I think it is pretty pivotal in kind of understanding what the unit is responsible for and how they're actually implemented. And more specifically, where people or the governments make that decision to employ this unit as opposed to kind of like other police or you know, military. Um, I, I think it's a little bit easier, but kind of when to move from normal police to this specific unit. But hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Again, if you have anything to recommend, any other units like this, any other special police or military that we haven't checked out yet, especially from some countries that we haven't checked out yet, then definitely feel free to send that my way because it is always cool checking out units from different countries because there's just different nuances. Um, you know, we've seen a lot of units kind of created out of the 1972 Munich Olympics incident. However, they all have their kind of nuances and how they've kind of adapted just based off of their own kind of country's history. But hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. That is it for this one. I'll see you on the next one.